going to be jerky and you can edit this. Okay. Okay. One of the things we want to talk about today is Apex triggers in Salesforce.com. As we mentioned briefly, Apex is the uh, proprietary language of Salesforce.com. Looks, acts, and feels a whole lot like Java. But when I actually pop it open and write some Apex, you're going to think, ah, oh, it looks a whole lot like Java. You're right, it does. Okay. Java is the underlying programming language within Salesforce.com. Now, in addition to that, there is a database underneath Salesforce.com as well. As you can see, it's got a very nice UI there, but when you strip Salesforce down to its just bare bones part, it's basically a relational database. It's actually an Oracle relational database. I think the latest version is 11G, I think it is right now. That's the, the latest version of Oracle 9i. So it's got all of the Oracle features and functions going on underneath the hood. You don't see any of those in Salesforce. All you see is the nice pretty user interface because Salesforce shields you from all of those gory details. Okay? And it's a darn good thing it does okay? because there's, it's very, very uh, complex what's going on underneath the hood and Salesforce shields you from that. Okay? Now, you're probably thinking at this point, if you've ever worked with Oracle databases or SQL Server databases, and a lot of you in here have, Great, if it's an Oracle database, I should be able to do what I usually do to an Oracle database, which is issue a, a SQL statement, an action query, an insert statement, update statement, or, or maybe a delete in order to handle large batches of records. Sorry, Salesforce will not let you do that. Okay? The reason is because Salesforce puts your organization, your instance, on a virtual machine that shares a physical box with other customers' instances. It doesn't so much have a problem with you issuing an update statement or a delete statement. The problem is the filter that you could possibly put on an update or delete statement. I could write an update statement that changes every single record in my entire Salesforce org on any one of the objects or tables. Okay? If I do that, I'm going to put a lot of system resources and potentially lock hundreds of thousands or even millions of records. Okay? If you do that, you are taking system resources away from the other customers that Salesforce happens to be co-locating with you on that same box, and that would put Salesforce in violation of their service level agreement, their SLA. That would put them in violation of their service level requirements for those other customers, so they will not let any one customer potentially lock up the entire box of system resources. Okay? So what you have to do instead is you can still update and delete records, but you just have to do it in a special way. Now, you also probably are familiar with other types of objects. Triggers are one of those. If you've ever used uh, Oracle or SQL Server, now, maybe you use triggers, maybe you don't. It's not a really often used database object. But in Salesforce.com, you will use them all the time. Okay? Triggers are basically sections of code just waiting for an event to happen so that every line of code within that event that you program fires off automatically with no user interface whatsoever. Okay? It's, th there's good things and bad things. The good part about that is triggers are powerful. They can change hundreds of thousands of records okay, in, in one database action unbeknownst to you. Okay, so they're super powerful. That's the upside. The downside is they're powerful because you can also delete a whole bunch of records not realizing what happened and Salesforce will not warn you that you are about to take such a, a drastic action. So with great power comes great responsibility, especially when it comes to triggers. So what does a Salesforce trigger actually look like and how are you going to program it? I'm going to come over here to my machine and I'm going to fire one up for you and show you. Uh, if I come over here to my leads object, I, I can see that I don't currently have any leads in here. I'm going to put one in, but if uh, I come over here to my setup and I go down to my uh, customize menu, again setup, customize, and I open leads, one of my choices is triggers. Okay? Now currently I don't have any triggers defined on this particular object. If I did, they'd be showing here. But I'm going to say give me a brand new trigger on this Salesforce object. I'm going to bump up the font a little bit to make it a little easier to see. And what you will see here is the boilerplate code that Salesforce gives you with every trigger that you write. Okay? This, this is again what's called uh, just boilerplate code. Salesforce gives you this. It has to have this in order to execute it properly as a trigger on the leads object when a certain event takes place. 
couple of things I want to point out. The, the keyword trigger is the first thing that has to show up. Then you've got the trigger name. Now here you've got it in angle brackets. Whenever Salesforce shows you something in angle brackets like this, it means they want you to change the name of it. Okay, so you're going to be changing the name of this trigger to a name of your choosing. We're going to choose one here in a little bit. Uh, the keyword on, that has to be there. You've got to have the type of object that this trigger applies to, in this case the lead object. And again, I picked it because uh, we don't currently have any in there. I want to show you how this thing behaves once you put a trigger on it. So you've got the, uh, the trigger keyword, name, on lead, and then you've got an argument over here in angle brackets, that's the event. Okay? There are six basic events that you can create a trigger for. This is what Salesforce is going to be listening for in order to fire off this trigger, and there's six basic events uh, that, that come in three flavors, the delete, update, and insert. You can have a trigger that fires off before the delete event or after it, before the update event or after it, and before the delete event and after it, six times. Okay? There are six different uh, events that you can listen for here. We're going to do uh, an, an update trigger so you can see how this works. So uh, the other thing I want to point your attention to is these two angle brackets, I'm sorry, not angle brackets, curly brackets. Okay, This is called the scope of the trigger. Everything that you want to happen within this trigger must take place within those curly brackets. Okay? Now, inside those curly brackets, every trigger that you write, okay, and this looks a lot like Java, but every trigger that you write, this is definitely not like Java, you are going to have to create something called a trigger loop. Okay? Now, let me write one for you, and I'll show you what it means. Uh, let me just put it down here, and then I'll explain exactly what it is I'm doing here. I'm going to put the for keyword, for uh, lead l colon trigger dot new, and then another curly, and another curly. Now, this is a trigger loop. Why do we need a trigger loop? The reason we need a trigger loop is because it's never a, a sure thing how this trigger is going to be fired off or how many records will have fired it off in one shot. Most of the time in Salesforce.com, if your users are doing what most users do is they page through a record, they do an insert, they do a single update, that trigger is only going to fire off one time. In 90% of the cases, that's exactly what's going to happen. However, in Salesforce.com, we've got the Salesforce data loader. The data loader, you can put an entire CSV with hundreds of thousands of records in it, do a mass insert into Salesforce all in one shot, and that trigger will fire off every single time for every record that you put in. Okay? You have to uh, account for the fact that that might happen. It's not just going to be a one-time thing. You must fire this off for every record that, uh, that you put into the Salesforce database. That's why you need a trigger loop. So in its very simplest form, okay, a trigger loop is going to look like this. I'm going to write what every programmer has had to write whenever they've learned how to program a uh, hello world trigger. Uh, every developer on the planet has had to do this, and you'll be no different. I'm going to say this is before update. Okay? And so I want this to happen for every lead that I put in. I happen to know that uh, the lead object has, uh, has a title field in it. So, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it is. Let me just uh, pop it open and make sure. Because if I come in and go give myself a new lead, yeah, there's a title field here. I have to give it uh, a last name and a company. But let's just say, for the purpose of example, for this trigger, since I'm doing an update, I can say l.title, and let's make it a little bit camel case here, equal uh, hello world, okay? and you've got to end it with a semicolon. All string literals in Salesforce Apex have to come between two single ticks. Okay? That's the apostrophes on your keyboard. And you have to terminate every single line with a semicolon. Okay? Don't feel bad if you forget it. Matter of fact, I promise, you know, before this class is over, you will forget. That's okay. Salesforce will give you a nice little error message up top here saying, hey, you forgot it. Okay? So go ahead and put it back in. So, but this is, in its bare bones form, what a trigger looks like. You've got the trigger keyword, the name of the trigger, the object that it applies to, the event that you want it to fire off for, and now you've got the trigger loop for you. And basically the way this reads in English is, for each lead, we're going to call it L throughout the, uh, throughout the scope of this trigger, 
in Trigger.new. Now, what is Trigger.new? Trigger.new is a collection of every record that happens to have, tr uh, to have tripped this trigger. Okay? If it's a single record, it's just going to be one. If it's the Salesforce data loader or perhaps a batch code that somebody has written, maybe in Microsoft.net, it's going to fire off every single time for every record that you put in. Might be one, might be a million times. Okay? Now, here's something you have to understand. But, you know, Salesforce is very transaction oriented. Again, they really have to be careful of how many system resources they allow you to tie up. So they're going to send your triggers over in batches. Okay? The batch size, make, make note of this, I guarantee if you take the test this will be on it. The batch size for a Salesforce trigger is 200. Okay? Salesforce will send you 200 records uh, in every batch and fire off this trigger. So that means if you've got, say, a, uh, a batch of 500 records that you have given to this trigger, 500 records, and it just sends it off in batches of 200, how many times is that trigger going to fire off? Three times. Okay? 200 the first time, 200 the second time, the final 100 the last time. Okay? So this trigger will fire off three times. See? So now that you've got your trigger, and you've got your trigger loop and you've got your implementation in object.property equal value form. Go ahead and do a quick save. And if you don't get any error messages, congratulations, you are a salesforce.com Apex programmer. Okay. So let's see how this works. If I come over here to, uh, to my leads object, okay. now again, we did this on an update. Let's go ahead and create a brand new one. Now it's not going to work on uh, on an insert because we did this as an update trigger but if I put down here Joe Snuffy and company um, Georgia Pacific and I'm gonna give them a status of working contacted and I save this okay Salesforce will go ahead and save this lead but notice the title field is still blank my trigger didn't fire off okay now why not the reason why not is because this is an insert that I just performed, not an update. Now, if I do an update, let's see what happens instead. Let's go ahead and say edit, and I'm going to say closed, click save, and now your trigger has fired up. Okay. So that's how you do a trigger. Any questions?